The North Kaibab Plateau contains some of the most beautiful and rugged country in Arizona. It covers over 1,200 square miles north of the Grand Canyon, with elevations ranging from 5,000 to 9,000 feet. The Kaibab is home to many wildlife species, including a large herd of mule deer, whose health and well-being are very important to Arizona Game and Fish, which has the responsibility for managing all wildlife in the state. So on this cold day in March, they're conducting a health assessment of the herd to determine their condition coming out of winter. The main right, impetus right. for doing this condition testing is to assess the carrying capacity and how well the range is able to handle these deer from year to year. And then if we have a particularly bad year or a series of bad years, we'll also have a baseline of a number of years to be able to compare it to under various climactic conditions. The study began in 2010 and is in its second year, with one more year to go. Then it'll be conducted every three years thereafter. The initial results are looking positive, with this herd showing signs of improvement over last year's. Well, the, the health assessment, um, we're looking at, at fat levels. Um, using ultrasound, we measure the fat thickness. The deer this year have been in pretty good condition. I think we've had fat levels, uh, we're measuring one to three millimeters on the back fat. Um, last year they were in a little bit poorer condition. We came off a, a real severe winter of 2009-2010. Uh, it was probably the severest winter we've had in 20 years and condition was low. So they've improved this year since winter was a little bit milder. But the trick to giving a mule deer a health checkup is that first you have to catch it. The helicopter goes out and uh, searches for, for deer scattered around here on the Kaibab. Uh, there's no shortage of deer, it appears. Um, it's it's uh, tricky in this type of habitat. Uh, it's fairly heavily wooded. Uh, we try to push the deer out into the open where they uh, can be more easily captured. But, but deer, like uh, any prey species, tries to avoid you know capture like this, and they tend to, to um, seek the tree forested cover. Maneuvering close to the deer takes a pilot with a lot of experience and a steady hand. Once the deer is in the right position, the gunner lets his net fly and the deer is brought down. Then, with the helicopter still hovering, the passenger jumps out to contain the deer. Of course, if the deer isn't completely subdued in the net, then the capture becomes more of a foot race. Once the deer is safely hobbled, it's blindfolded and placed in a travel bag to reduce stress on the animal and flown to the work site. When the helicopter arrives, several people with a stretcher rush out to unload the deer and carry it to the work area. The first order of business is to get its weight. One, five, two. Then what is often the most time consuming and trickiest part of the procedure begins, untangling the deer from the net without injury to it or its handlers. After the deer is freed from the net and its powerful legs secured, it's carried to the medical tent where the health assessment takes place. First thing we do when we're checking the deer after they've been captured is we look them over quickly for injuries and then also take their temperature because um, it's very common for these deer to get overheated uh, during the capture process and if that happens um, and becomes too extreme um, we can have a real problem with them so we try and cool them down quickly if they come in overheated. And then the next part is to go ahead and assess their status. This year the deer seem to be looking a little bit better, there's a little more fat on their bodies and this directly affects the um, milk of the doe and how well she's able to care for that fawn when it hits the ground, which is, is going to be here in another month or two. The sonogram is part of the condition testing. We are actually using the ultrasound to measure the depth of the uh, fat under the skin. And we're looking at that basically at the base of the tail. The other way we assess their body condition is by 
feeling how much um, certain points of their body stick out. The one, one main point is the withers um, between the shoulder blades and then the other is there's a ligament um, on the, uh, between the tail and the pelvis and we feel how much of that we can pinch. So it's kind of like with people, you pinch an inch, only we're pinching in a couple of different places. The other thing we do is we do do some disease assessment. Um, we look for hemorrhagic disease, which is a viral disease that's transmitted by uh, a, a Coolicoides gnat. We also look for blue tongue virus. Last year we had no evidence of those diseases up here. Um, and it's more for uh, just monitoring the basic health of the population. The doe also receives an ear tag for identification purposes, and any injuries she may have sustained during capture are quickly attended to. Deer are incredibly strong, incredibly feisty, uh, with a real will to survive, and, and interacting up close with humans is not something they relish. And so dealing with them at that level uh, can be very strenuous physically. Uh, and, and I've determined uh, through mild injuries that it's really a young man's job and probably when you're starting to approach the tail end of your career that, that some of those duties are best left to the new guys who are young and tough and rough and tumble. Uh, not that I don't enjoy it still um, because as I said actually laying your hands on animals and taking those measurements and, and dealing with them up close um, is, is something that the vast majority of society never gets to experience. With several people collecting samples, the work goes quickly and the entire health assessment can be completed in only a few minutes. Then the deer is ready to be released. If the capture site was less than a mile from the processing location, then the deer can be released on site. In this instance, the doe is carried several yards from the tent and released facing away from the activity. When releasing an animal, it's important to be aware of any obstructions like trees or dangerous terrain such as gullies or cliffs. Generally, the hobbles are released first, then the blindfold is slipped off. Everyone lets go and the doe quickly gets the heck out of Dodge. If the deer was captured more than a mile away from the work site, then it is placed back in its travel bag and returned to the area where it was captured. To help keep the deer calm while waiting for transport, everyone tries to keep the noise level down since people are predators to this prey species. Once the helicopter is back on site, the deer receives a free return trip to its herd. Well, well, the deer capture presents a pretty neat opportunity for somebody that's interested in wildlife and wildlife work and that, that it's hands-on work, you're actually handling the animals, uh, which, which really is a rare thing uh, in this day and age. I think people often assume we're, we're hands-on with the critters in the hills all the time, but we're really not. Uh, we observe them constantly, uh, but, but actually hands-on work where we're handling the animals and taking measurements and things of that nature, a really relatively rare occurrence. Uh, the deer population is, is real good here in the Kaibab. Um, you know, we've, this is one of those herds that uh, has been studied a lot in the past because of its uh, major uh, booms and busts. And uh, deer, oh, probably at least four or more times in the past have exceeded their carrying capacity out here. And so, um, you know, the more information we have on the herd, uh, we can keep it below that, that carry capacity, capacity level. Uh, that'll be a good thing for us. Um, we, the idea behind wildlife management is, is to keep a stable population, stable harvest. So we don't want to see these big uh, increases in the population and eventual crashes um, because we won't be able to provide that recreational opportunity you know, consistently year after year. While this study is beneficial to the people of Arizona and their mule deer population, it comes at no cost to the taxpayer. The money for this study was raised from the sale of special mule deer license tags by the Arizona Deer Association, the Mule Deer Foundation, and the Arizona Big Game Super Raffle. After three days of battling rough weather, 24 does were captured and released unharmed and the survey results show a definite improvement over the previous one. The average body weight was five pounds heavier this year, which translates to the deer having 7% body fat where the year before they were down to only 2.4% body fat. 
This means the does and their unborn fawns will have a much greater chance of survival, thereby assuring the future of this historic mule deer herd on the North Kaibab. <laughs>